Good morning, my name is Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And on this video, I'm going to show you how to check the valve clearances on a Yamaha YFM450. Now this is the four-wheel drive version and it's also got the electric power steering as well. It's about two years old. Uh, it's done a reasonable amount of work though. It works at a YMCA camp where they do adventure activities for school children and so on. And um, it's a pretty harsh environment. Now the first thing to do um, is to remove a shed load of plastics and seats. And I'm going to take the wheels off because I've got the brakes to do later on as well. Um, but there's going to be a catalogue of videos. But if you're going to do valve clearance, the engine has to be cold. And this bike has been stood overnight, so the engine's nice and cold, which means do the valve clearances first, and then all the other jobs that I've got to do on this vehicle will follow, and you'll see a great wrath of videos hitting the channel covering each particular job. I'm going to break it down into individual tasks, you know, like um, doing the brakes, uh, oil change, changing the oil on the diff at the rear, changing the oil on the diff at the front. You know, there's, there's going to be lots of videos. So here we go. Valve clearances, time to check them. Now, when you're taking off the fuel tank, just be really, really careful. If you look down here, you've got the fuel tap, and that's connected straight onto the fuel tank itself. You can see up there, look, like a bracket. Well, we've got to get rid of this plastic shred, this plastic extension first. And right down there, if you can see that, there's a posi drive screw. Okay, so we'll get that pulled off now, and then we can remove the fuel tank and get access. Just one of the things you've got to be aware about, otherwise you could actually break the fuel tank or the, if you force it you could be snapped there. At the very least, snap off the, the actual uh, fuel tap mechanism, which would be pretty bad. Okay, so what we've done to remove the fuel tank is take some of the plastics off. It's pretty easy to be honest, doing all that kind of stuff. Fuel tank is retained by a couple of M6 bolts at the back, a couple of M6 bolts at the front. Do the fuel tap bit as well. And then, very carefully, you should be able to gain access. Now, once the fuel is turned in the off position, which is the mid position, then you can take the pipe off the tap. Now, now that we've removed the, uh, the extension to the tap, you'll need some pliers just to align that to the mid position there. There we go. Uh, actually, it might be I think it's easy to take the pipe off at the carburetor end, actually. There we go. Done. Easy. Right, it's more it's not going to blow up. 
Okay, so once we've got the fuel tank lifted out of the way, we've got this rubber mat to remove. Now, this is held in by, by the looks of it, reusable cable ties. So they've got a little tine on them. If you press the little tine, you can actually, usually, there we go, undo them. So we can reuse all of those. Good old Yamaha. Two and three, and the last one, I think. Four. Now we should be able to remove that out of the way. And get rid of all those leaves too. Cool. Here our nature, have some nature back. So you can see here exposed is the inlet valve cover. And under there will be the, the valve that we need to adjust the clearance. And of course the exhaust one is a little bit harder to get to, that's right down the front of the engine. So we'll go to the inlet first, so you can see the process, um, and then once that's done I'll do the exhaust valve. Now they have to operate um, within different tolerances. The intake valve is, uh, memory, 0.06mm to 0.1mm clearance, and the exhaust is 0.1mm. 0.16 millimeters to 2 millimeters clearance. I'll put the specs on the screen. I'm pretty sure I'm right. Okay, so to remove the cover, before we take the cover off, we want to make sure it's clean around that area because uh, otherwise dirt's going to get inside the engine. Now these are a number five Allen key. Okay, so there we are. That is the rocker. And that is basically the spring for your inlet valve. So I'm going to bring the camera a bit closer. Um, now, before we do that, before we can actually adjust the valve, we've got to get the crankshaft to a particular position. And I'll show you how we've got access on the left-hand side of the engine for that, where we can actually get a socket in there and rotate the crankshaft until it's at the right position, which will give us the clearance point. At the moment, the rocket is on the lobe, on the intake lobe of the camshaft and there's no clearance there whatsoever. So we need to rotate the engine around to the correct point. Okay, so first job is to remove this plastic cover and that's going to give us access to the inspection uh, or the two points where we can, one we can connect to the crankshaft and the other will give us the, uh, the visibility of the marks on the flywheel. And those marks are important for this next step. I believe these bikes are still carburetor, you know. Come on, Yamaha. Is it time for fuel injection now? Okay, so we've got a little viewing window under this cover here and we can turn this bolt and that's going to rotate the engine for us. That's pretty handy. Okay, so let's undo that next. Big flat screwdriver. Mm. 
Now, quite often these things get over tightened and then they chew up when you're undoing them. Okay, so before we can do uh, or rotate the crankshaft to its exact positioning for the valve clearance adjustment, we need to remove the spark plug and that's going to prevent any kind of compression buildup as we rotate the engine over. And it's going to allow that crank to, to maintain its position, which is really important. Now, we will be fitting a new spark plug to this bike anyway, but... Um, Drop it on the floor. That's pretty good. Okay, so now that the spark plug's out, we can return back to the flywheel and we can set the position of the crank. Okay, so we can now rotate the crankshaft anti-clockwise until we see the T mark actually on the flywheel itself. We've got an F at the moment. That's for fire, so we've got to turn it anti-clockwise. Well, there you go, look. There's your T. Now, this is a four-stroke engine, which means that the camshaft turns at half the speed of the crank. So that's one revolution of the camshaft for two revolutions of the, crank, uh, of the crankshaft. So there's a possibility that the camshaft is 180 degrees out, um, and the lobes are in the wrong position. So we now need to reach up and to see if there's clearance on the actual rocker arm itself. If there's clearance, then it's in the right position. Okay, so this is the intake valve, and I can move it up and down very slightly, and we do have a clearance. And it's that clearance that we need to check. Now, valve clearances. The manufacturer gives you a range. It's not a specific measurement. The range on this particular intake valve, for this particular bike, is 0.06 to 0.1 millimeters. Now, as an engine wears, the valve clearance reduces. It doesn't increase. Because what happens is the seat where the valve sits on the head slowly wears away. You know, the, the face of the valve wears down, the seat wears down slightly, and the valve ends up going further and further up into the head, and the clearance gets less and less and less. And eventually, if you don't regularly adjust your valve clearances as per the maintenance schedule, then the valve will get to a point where there's zero clearance and then the valve won't close, it won't fully close and you'll lose compression it'll start popping back through the carb and it'll be really hard to start and once it's, once it's warmed up it'll die on you and all that kind of stuff so um, I have here some genuine Yamaha feeler gauges and these are really really good because they're very small and they're great for getting into, those, into the valves uh, on the five valve heads because there's not a lot of room, and, and to use a standard feeler gauge, it isn't going to happen. I think you saw me use these on the Yamaha Viking uh, engine rebuild a few months ago. So I'm going to set the clearance to what I call maximum spec, which is going to be 0 0.1, because over time that clearance is going to shrink down. So if we look on here, have we, oh, there we go, look, we have got, good old Yamaha, exactly 0 0.1 millimeters on a feeler gauge. So I've coaxed all these other ones back into their little home, hopefully. When you're ready, there we go. Okay, so that is, there you go, zero, that's better, down there, no, there we are, 0 0.1 millimeters. So that is what I call maximum spec, and that's what I'll be setting that clearance to. So we'll go back to the bike now, and we'll see if that's the clearance. Now, obviously, if this doesn't go in the gap, the clearance has reduced and I need to undo the lock nut and wind the little adjuster out a tiny amount until the point where this slides in under very light resistance. Um, you know, you just push it in and if it buckles up and won't go in, then the gap's too small. And if it just flows in without any kind of distortion to the feeler gauge, that's an indication that the, the gap is too large and we need to bring it back down a bit more. Okay, so back to the quad and we're going to check and maybe adjust the valve clearance on the intake valve. Right, so working around the camera, 
It's not too bad on this one, but uh, the exhaust valve is going to be impossible. So we just lift up the valve and just feed that into the gap. Now, it's definitely not going in. I don't know if you can see that or not, but the, the feeler gauge is buckling up completely before it's going in. So we're going to actually undo this lock nut a fraction and adjust the valve. Okay, so first job is to crack off that lock nut. Now we need to also make sure that we keep the adjuster in position. We don't want to lose that adjustment. Now we need to increase the gap. So we turn that slightly anti-clockwise. Lock it off again. We can check that. There you go, absolutely bang on. So there's light resistance on it going through. Just about to start buckling up. You know that that will be a, a complete buckle. So there we go. So that's that one set. Now just the exhaust valve to go. Okay. Now amazingly enough, there is actually a torque setting for that lock nut, and the torque setting is 20 newton meters. There we go, done. So now all that's left to do is to clean off that oil residue and refit the rocker cover. Okay, so rather than replace this O-ring seal, and this, this bike's not particularly old to be honest, uh, Yamaha do a, what's called a Yamaha Bond for Motorsport. It's a self-drying liquid gasket, and I've used this stuff for years. It's available to the public through your Yamaha dealer. It's not just a a Yamaha technician only sort of stuff you can actually get hold of it okay so just a little tiny bit we can run it around with our fingers as well later on around there you don't want too much because you don't want it to risk to risk going inside the engine because that's going to block up oilways and stuff so just a really light layer all the way around as you can see most of it that I put on is now waste so just a really really light layer is all you need there you go okay so cover back on and a couple of bolts Now again, there's a torque setting for these bolts. And the torque setting for these bolts, for the tappet cover bolts, is 10 newton meters. There we go. Great stuff. Okay, so just the exhaust valve to do next then. Now, unfortunately, access to the exhaust valve is extremely limited and it makes it impossible for me to film. So remember the clearance for the exhaust valve is 0 0.16 to 0 0.2 millimeters. But you perform the adjustment in exactly the same way and you don't need to move the crankshaft anymore. That's in the right position. So same bolts, same everything basically, but as you can see, you just you just can't get in. You know, even down here, if I pull the plastics back a little bit, you can just to say see behind there the cover, but it's really tight, and I'm very sorry, but there's no room for a camera in there, so you'll have to leave me to do the exhaust valve all on my own. And then you can watch me put it all back together again. So yes, it's unfortunate, but the uh, the exhaust valve on that particular quad bike, uh, with all the power steering and stuff in there as well, the exhaust, the plastics, uh, it's going to be really, really hard for me to film that for you with any kind of clarity. So the technique 
to do the uh, to set the exhaust or check the exhaust valve clearance and make any necessary adjustments is exactly the same as the intake valve. Uh, however, the specification is different. Your specification for the exhaust valve is 0.16 to 0.2 millimeters. And again, you want to be aiming for the top end of spec, so 0.2 millimeters would be ideal. And um, well, I'm sorry that you can't join me uh, on setting that particular valve clearance, but it's just not possible. There's just no room in there. Um, okay, so I'm going to crack on and do the valve clearance, and then I'll uh, take you through the process of putting the bike back together again, uh, including all the relevant torque specifications for all the nuts and bolts. Okay. So go and grab a coffee. I'll come back shortly. <sighs> that wasn't very much fun at all, actually. And yes, it did require adjustment. It was at, um, what was it at? 0 0.18. Yes, it's in spec, but, um, you know, I like to always be top end of spec, so it's now 0 0.2 mil clearance on the exhaust valve. Okay, so it's time now to put the bike partly back together so we can get it run up and uh, I've got an oil change to do next. So I'll go through the specific torque settings for the replacement of some of the parts um, but you won't see me put the whole bike back together on this video uh, as there's going to be another video covering how to change the oil. Okay. Right now this little plug here goes back in, that's the next step. Um, be careful not to cross thread it because they're only plastic. And usually Yamaha gives us a torque setting for these, which is something stupid like three newton meters that nobody could measure anyway. So my advice to you is to use a decent screwdriver, decent blade. Don't over tighten it because it shouldn't be that tight. Okay, so now the outer cover, which is those, where is it? Here we are, look which is 4M6, and these are all standard Yamaha torque M6 bolt, which is 10 newton meters. Because they do have some standard torque, which is good. Okay. Now, some of the models have a, uh, a backup sort of pull cord mechanism which goes on instead of this cover. It has a pull handle like a lawnmower. And um, the bolts that retain that are still 10 newton meters. It's the same for both. Right. So we'll go and find the torque wrench again. 10 newton meters. Okay, so next job is just to pop the spark plug back in. Now again, be really careful that you don't cross thread these things. Just take your time feeling for those threads. And the torque setting for these is 18 newton meters. as you can see, isn't a lot. Now 
There we go. Okay, so the next job is to fit that rubber cover that goes back over the engine. Now, with the rubber cover, it's got a few little clips, and put it rightly, some around the front of here somewhere. Oh, yeah, flip that off. So one on there, one on there. These also go over there, over those tank lugs, underneath. And then this pipe runs up through the gap and goes through there, like a breather pipe. And there we are. Just threads through and locates it to there. Okay, so now that all that's done, we can put on those four reusable zip ties again. Just going to redo that one the way around, I think. Easier. Yeah. Don't need to be over tight, they're only holding a rubber in place. Okay, so now it's time for the fuel tank, and of course, we've got the pipe for the carburetor is down on the fuel tank, so we'll drop that on and plumb it up. Okay, now be careful you don't lose these. These little spaces go in the bottom of the front mounts. I know this because one fell out earlier on. Oh no, hang on a minute. That's right, because I'm around. Perfect. Even better. Right, yes, these go in here. Like that. And they're very easy to lose. So hopefully they'll stay put. Remember to put the fuel pipe through first and then just ease the tank onto its front mounts. There we go. Okay. It's pretty good. Now, there's some bolts. Okay, so what have we got? Well, it's these four here that hold the tank on. And we're going to put some copper paste on these bolts.
one more. Now again, these bolts are uh, 10 newton meters uh, in torque. So yeah, 10 newton meters torque setting for these bolts. Now, with your fuel pipe, just make sure you've got the routing correct. So it should go underneath uh, the choke cable there, look. And it should go onto here. So just pull that back a little bit. So it goes onto there on the carb, and then that little clip should go all the way back. Well, to about two mils from the end of the pipe. There we go. Okay, so fuel line's back on. Next job is to fit that extension to the, uh, the fuel tap, which is just there, look. So the fuel tap's currently in the off position. It's very important we put it back in the right place. Now there is, on the back here, a little tiny lug just here, which lines up with one on the actual tap itself. Um, I think the problem is, if you weren't aware of that, you could probably ram it on in the wrong position. So, we know the tap's in the off position, so we'll put it in the off position, which is horizontal. Pop that on there. There we go. And then the screw is still down the hole. And we'll just tighten it up. Now, obviously, as we tighten it, we need to hold it, otherwise it's going to rotate. Because we want to keep it in the off position for now. There we go. Okay, and there'll be a torque setting for that, which is probably peanuts. Okay, so now we can probably start where we can start the bike up, get the engine warmed up, and I can move on to my next job, which is changing the oil. <clears throat> okay, so other than putting the last few plastics on there, that's the valve clearance is done. So I'm going to start the engine up, get it to warm through, and then once it's warm, I can do an oil change. Yeah, the bike's done 217 hours, and valve clearances are due at 150 hours, and then every 150 thereafter. So now that I've set them, it's got 150 hours of work before it needs to be checked again. Okay, so that brings me to the end of the first of many videos covering various workshop tasks and servicing tasks on a Yamaha YFM 450. Um, this one's about two years old, so I'll say it's about 2014 model. It's the four-wheel drive version with the electric uh, assistance on the power steering too. So that's the valve clearance procedure done. I hope you found that helpful, and obviously Throughout the video, I'll have put down all the various specs on the screen for you, as I always do. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, then please do leave them down the bottom, and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then uh, you'll receive free notification as and when any new videos get uploaded to the channel. There's usually three or four minimum every week, and I do tend to specialize more in the Yamaha products, motorcycles, ATVs, side-by-sides, that kind of stuff, as well as many other things. But I do have all the specifications available to me in the workshop manuals uh, to hand for the Yamahas. So I'm able to put all the specs on the video for you. Uh, so really, it's just like a video manual kind of thing. That's the idea. Anyway, 
Okay, well, my name's Andy Young. I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand. And cheers. Thanks for watching. Over and out.